I just created this 30 page children's book in just five minutes using one single prompt. And I'm able to sell this children's book for at least $100 a pop. Not only that, but with the exact same tool, I can turn this children's book into a full animated video that can double up into two separate pieces of content. Now, I'm gonna show you which tool I use to do this, and for sure, I'm also going to show you how you can monetize this content to turn this into a full lucrative side hustle. The kids book industry is massive, and on YouTube alone, there are content creators making hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month. Now, if you put passion and consistency into this, it's possible that you could be making similar kinds of money. It's all about how much time and effort you are going to put into this. So I'm going to show you the tools and how you can get started today, and the rest will be up to you. So let's dive straight in and take a look at this amazing AI tool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here is our platform, and it is called ReadKids. Dot com. And you can simply enter a brief story description over here, and you've got all of these tabs to personalize the story. And the best part is they also give you really great character consistency. But to get the full benefits, I'm simply going to sign in. All right, so this is where we start to create, right? And as you can see, you can either create a story, an animation video, or even make a image. Now, before I start creating, I just wanted to show you here that they have released their 2.0, which gives you consistent character generation. So it's a lot more professional and the character that you create remains consistent across all of the images, which really is a big plus. Now, I'm going to simply enter a story about a boy's first day at school. So here I am going to say Tim's first day day at school. And that's all I'm inserting. Then I'm going to play around with these toggles up at the top. So first, we can have a look at the reader's age. So seven to nine years works over there. Then we can pick the story type. Either it's a fairy tale, holidays, adventure, activities, stories, education, or other. I'm going to put here adventure as I want to give an adventurous undertone to Tim's first day at school. Then in terms of the story theme, they give us a whole bunch of different themes that we can choose over here. And I think I'm going to add superheroes since Tim can be a superhero. Then we are going to adjust whether it's chronological order, flashback or insertion. I think chronological order makes sense. And then we can have third person perspective or first person perspective. So I'm going to make it third person. Then we can make it non-anthropomorphic or anthropomorphic. I'm going to leave it as default. Then for the size, we can have it square shape, so one by one, or we can have it 16 by nine or three by four. For now, I'll leave it as the one by one, and we will leave it at version one. And I am going to hit generate and see what it does for us. All right, so all of a sudden, it is generating a whole storyline for us. So Timothy Tumbleweed, who sometimes went by Tim the Tremendous in his wildest daydreams, awoke to his alarm. So Tim's marvelous first day is the name of our story. So once we're happy with this, and I'm just going to uh, assume we're happy for purpose of demonstration in this video, I then can click on Extract Roles. So it's busy passing the roles from the script of the story. And we can now choose between a bunch of styles. So we have a total of 244 drawing styles that we can choose from. We can go for sketchy doodle style, clay style, fresh watercolor illustration, dreamy pastoral like the lo-fi girl, simple cartoon style, cartoon oil painting, soft plush. The amount of styles they have here truly is incredible. They even have that old Disney... Uh, retro animation stuff, which is so cool as well. But I am going to opt for the fresh watercolor illustration style. I really think that's a good one to go for for this story. And I'm now going to click on next. All right, now we get to the character part where we are going to design our protagonist, who is Timothy Tumbleweed. And there are a few uh, supporting characters as well. So 
First, we'll start with Timothy over here, and we can adjust his uh, skin color, brown, uh, hair color, hairstyle, accessories, clothing, etc. And if you want to edit your character, you can simply go and edit and adjust some of the um, things around here. But this helps to give you the character consistency for each character over here. So once you're happy with the um, sort of variables for each character, you can then simply hit on generate and it'll then put images to your characters. So this will take just under two minutes, but I'm gonna fast forward. All right, boom, so here we have Timothy Tumbleweed who's been gener generated. Now we can do the same for Ellie and Timothy's mother and Miss Halloway. So what I'll do is just generate these ones as well. All right, so here we have all of our characters that have been generated. We've got Ellie, who I assume will be a friend of his, his mama, and Miss Halloway, who I assume will be his first teacher. So now that we've got all of the characters generated, we can move on to the next stage, which is generating, which is generating the storyboard. So over here, we can see the various pages and here they will have the text for the pages. So Timothy Tumbleweed, who sometimes goes by Tim the Tremendous, in his wildest daydreams, woke to his alarm clock's shrill ring, beep, beep, beep. And it basically uses the whole story script to generate the text for the different pages. And we can see this over here has 12 pages in total. And it's saying 10 here, but there's 12, I guess, with the cover and the, the back. And so we can now click on next and it'll generate a, a storyboard for us. As you can see, the AI is busy coding this out for us. And yeah, in a few minutes, it'll be ready. And then I can show you the final product. All right, so just like that, we now have our generated book. And as you can see, we've got the various pages over here and we can easily edit any of these pages just simply by clicking on it and then you can adjust things like the font of the text, the size of the text. Uh, yeah, you can really adjust every page as much as you want. If you want to, you can adjust the sizing over here as well. And then you have your control panel at the bottom over here where you can add things like audio or even background music. So on the audio side, you can simply go onto the different pages over here and have a young male voice, or you can choose the voice that you want. But as an example, let's listen to the voice over here. Tim's marvelous first day. See, that sounds good for this particular book. And so I have generated that voice. And on the background music, we can also choose something such as cedar wind. Ah, that's nice. <laughs> All right, but for now, I'm going to keep it in a storybook format, and I am going to show you the finished product so you can see the story for yourself. Tim's Marvelous First Day Timothy Tumbleweed, who sometimes went by Tim the Tremendous, in his wildest daydreams, awoke to his alarm clock's shrill ring, beep, beep, beep. Sunlight filtered weakly through the autumn curtains, and the outside world smelled of crisp leaves and distant toast. Today was not an ordinary day. Today was his first day at a brand new school, and also the day he planned, quietly in his heart, to be a hero. Tim's shoes squeaked as he tiptoed to the breakfast table. He wore his favorite red sneakers, scuffed with secret adventures. He slurped his cereal with one eye on the clock. The big hand stretched hungrily toward eight. Tim's mother packed his bag with a silent smile, as if she too suspected this wasn't just any old Monday. Outside, clouds shuffled across the cotton candy sky. Tim shivered in his blue jacket as they walked through the chilly autumn air to Willowbrook Primary School. The school building loomed ahead, all brick and glass, with the schoolyard already full of chattering kids. Tim's heart fluttered like a trapped bird. What if he said something silly? 
What if he tripped on the playground and everyone laughed? Inside the classroom, colors danced along the walls. Miss Halloway, whose glasses gleamed like twin stars, smiled and read names from a long list. When she got to Timothy Tumbleweed, Tim's voice came out smaller than he meant. Here, he squeaked, cheeks hot. Lunchtime arrived in a storm of noise. As Tim unzipped his lunchbox, he spotted a boy sitting alone by the window, pale, silent, staring out at the rainy playground. Tim wondered, should I try to talk to him? What would a real hero do? Crunch! Tim's apple slipped from his fingers and rolled beneath the silent boy's table. Um, excuse me, Tim stammered, crawling under to retrieve it. He looked up at the boy whose eyes were soft and curious. I'm Tim, he said, clutching his apple awkwardly. The boy smiled just a little. I'm Eli. Tim hesitated, but remembered the secret promise he'd made to himself before breakfast. Heroes aren't always loud or brave or have capes. Sometimes they're just kind. Would you like to eat with me? For a moment, it was so quiet Tim could almost hear his own heartbeat. But um, but um, Eli nodded. The afternoon sun cut through the clouds, sending golden bars across the desks. That last lesson, Tim found himself raising a hand to answer a question about planets. Miss Halloway beamed. Eli, sitting beside him now, offered a shy thumbs up under the table. When the bell rang, releasing the swirl of children into the chilly air, Tim waited for Eli by the gate. His heart felt bigger, lighter, almost heroic. The leaves spun in the wind as they walked home together, capes only in their imaginations. Tim wondered what the next day might bring, and if all heroes felt this sort of happiness at the end of their adventures. Very, very cool ride. And so in just a few minutes, you can see how we created an entire children's book using AI, and it's super high quality, a super nice story for bedtime. And you may be wondering, okay, that's awesome, but how do I make money from this? I am going to show you four different ways that you can monetize this and start to create a side hustle using this tool. Now, the first, now, the first method out of four is to sign up on Etsy as a publisher and then start to create children's books, which you can then sell on Etsy. And just to show you that this works, here we got one that is clearly AI generated. They're selling for $32.96 a pop. And you can see that 66 people have already reviewed it, meaning that they are getting purchases there, right? This one over here is selling for just under $40 a pop. And they've had 7,400 people review it. This one over here is at $7.70. Sorry, I'm saying dollars. It's actually euros. <laughs> but yeah, dollars, you can assume it's a little bit higher. Um, 22 people have reviewed. This one, 24 euros and 259 people have reviewed. And it just goes on and on and on. So Etsy is number one. You could <coughs> sign up, become a publisher, and then upload your books onto Etsy to sell them for a similar amount. Number two is to sell on Gumroad. So like Etsy, you can leverage selling of children's books. And here you can see a few examples. You've got Memorize the Movements as a storybook or Learn Spanish through Reggaeton. And these are books that people are selling for, for $87 or $14. You'll see these have quite a few less reviews. So if you are going to choose between one of the two, I would definitely uh, go with Etsy. And then you can have a third option, which I think could perform even better than Etsy. And that is Amazon KDP, selling on Amazon KDP. So what that means is you get your book published on Amazon and then you can sell it there as well. Now to publish a book on Amazon can be a bit of a pain. So I would highly recommend using a freelance service. You get lots of these helpers that are able to publish your book on Amazon Kindle KDP. Uh, they can format the book for you, get it published on their existing uh, publishing pro file. And as you can see over here, it can be pretty uh, cheap. So $10 to get it published, 
And from there, you are then able to uh, have your book published on Amazon KDP and uh, monetize that way as well. So that was the third option. And the fourth option is to publish on YouTube. So publishing on YouTube means that once you hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, you will be able to monetize your videos. And so what you could do is create a kid story channel where you can upload the video versions of your books onto YouTube. And if, if you upload these videos at least once every week or once every two weeks in a consistent manner, you will slowly but surely start to grow an audience of video viewers. And once you get to that thousand subscriber mark and you have enough watch hours, you will then be able to monetize your channel, meaning that you will gain revenue from the ads that play during your videos when people are watching them. And not only that, but you can start to throw in a few affiliate links into your videos. You could do video sponsorships and then gain revenue like that as well. And so I believe that combining all four of these versions or of these opportunities to monetize your kids' stories and videos, this can turn into a truly lucrative side hustle for you. Also, just to show you, over here on the left is where you can create your picture book, or if you want to, you can go and animate the video so that there's actually animation in the story. So over here, you can see you can create the animation script and just like we did creating the storybook, you follow the same process and then generate amazing animations just like this. Suddenly, one of Alex's planes caught a gust and glided into the neighbor's yard. And so I would highly recommend that you explore this, especially if you are creative and if this is the sort of side hustle you're looking for. It's pretty low effort and it's a lot of fun putting these stories together. And if you get into a cool niche like educational stories centered around the forest or you know learning to code for kids or something like that, you could generate a very powerful little niche and grow a fairly large audience in a fair amount of time and start to reap the rewards of that. Remember, it's all about putting in your passion, matching it with consistency and that will give you success at the end of the day. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you do have any question about Read Kids, do let me know down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get to them as soon as I can. Otherwise, I hope that you keep it real. I hope you keep hustling and I hope to catch you in the next video. Peace out.